Is your fixed income truly fixed income? Does it provide diversification, income, and risk management for your clients? At MFS, we help advisors deliver these essentials. We call it Essential Fixed Income. Find out more at mfs.com slash fixed income. Blog Talk Radio. Bobby, you're here again. Yeah, my doctor told me to reduce stress at work, so I come to Buffalo Wild Wings to eat lunch and watch sports. I get to pick one of seven entrees, like sandwiches and salads, plus one of seven sides. Oh, I like sides. It's so affordable, I can finally take a vacation. Where are you going to go? Here, Tim, here. Introducing the new B-Dubs Fast Break Lunch Menu, starting at a new low price. Dine in or order takeout weekdays between 11 and 2. Participation and availability may vary. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Love Welcome. Radio. Welcome to Unlimited Realities. I am your host, Lisa Zimmer, and I'm really, really pleased to have such a wonderful, chock full, informative show for you today. We have three guests. So it's going to be a little busy, but we start off with a fascinating subject, and I'm really, really interested to get into this with author and researcher Marie Jones, who wrote the book Mind Wars, in addition with Larry Flaxman. And Mind Wars is a book about the history of mind control, surveillance, and social engineering by the government, media, and secret societies. So, you know... I am a history channel watcher, so this is right up my alley, and I'm really looking forward to talking with Marie. So without further ado, we're going to introduce Marie Jones, and we also have two more guests after that. So hello, hello, welcome, Marie. Thank you so much for being our guest on Unlimited Realities today. Your book, Mind Wars, was fascinating. Tremendous, tremendous information you've really researched here. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Marie. Are you there? Yeah. Hi, Marie. I just, <laughs> hi there. I, I heard a strange voice telling me that I was being being muted and unmuted. So. <laughs> Oh, I don't no. know if you heard okay. a word. Okay, I apologize. I apologize. Oh, I was wondering where me. where we went there. So as I was telling <laughs> the audience, you wrote Mind Wars with in addition with Larry Flaxman. And this is a book that talks about the history of mind control, surveillance, and social engineering by both the government, the media, and also so, um secret societies. So let's just dive into this because this is quite a theory. And I would like to talk to you about how did you come up with understanding that this theory existed or information that this theory existed? Where did your um, where did it come from? Well, it you? actually came from asking the same questions that you did. Is this theory or is is there a, a real part of our history? And interestingly, in the research, finding out that yes, indeed, this has been a a big black mark on the history of not just our country, but obviously many others, and really wanting to write an objective book that looked at the use of mind control over time. And we're going way back to ancient civilizations and, you know, the dawning of secret societies and through the Middle Ages, all the way up through the infamous MK Ultra period, um, to today and, and into the future, because the future is where the social engineering and the surveillance really become more amplified and the things that we sort of have to look forward to. Okay. And so really, yeah, that was the in, the line of inquiry that Larry and I took. It was like, okay, we want to know how much of this is real and how much of this is fringe and conspiracy. Right, right. You did. You followed it up with a tremendous amount of research, and I was really, really impressed by how you went about um, following up the theories. So what events would you say recently that you'd be able to link or prove some po- some mind control aspects or, or where it has been used? I mean, our, our media has been, been full of atrocities and, um, you know, uh, it seems like uh, things are, are out of control in so many ways. Um, you attribute some of this in your book to some very um, direct mind control elements. Can we discuss that a little bit? 
Sure. I think right now, you know, as of the present, the media is the number one cult. Some people don't like to use the term mind control because it makes them think of movies and and, crazy novels and things. But this is really happening. Media manipulation, social engineering, whatever you want to call it, it is happening. We have a very uh, directed... Uh, agenda that the media takes on, whether you're talking about the right or the left, to give very specific information that is not necessarily the truth. In fact, much of what we see today as news is not news. It's opinion. It's spin. It's the presentation of unproven facts that later might get cleared up. I can't tell you how many times I've watched my local news and had them talk about stories that they didn't even have the proven facts for yet. And then two days later, they're backpedaling, trying to apologize for not having waited a True. little. <laughs> right, so really, right. Journalism, journalism is like it's dead. <laughs> yes, oh, it truly is. At the same time, great minds, journalism is dead. And yes, and to find it really journalism, is. Yeah, you have to really dig. Now, a lot of people will say, well, there's the alternative media sources. The problem with those is, is that they don't always exercise that same discernment. Sometimes, right. You you really have to stand in the middle of the mass media and the alternative media and just go with your gut. And people don't want to do their own research. That's another thing that the media is very much aware of. So they'll throw anything at you, and they know the vast majority of of listeners and viewers are going to accept it as truth. Right. Well, we've become such a lazy um, society in so many ways, and, you know, we look to journalists to really give us the truth and the meat of what's going on out there and the control and the manipulation that is prevalent within media is, and the immaturity in journalism that is prevailed. I yes. read something in my local, <laughs> my local newspaper, and this infuriated me so much, that they were taking quotes from the Syrian president off his Facebook page, and I thought to myself, dear God, is this where we have come? I mean, <laughs> we're, we're writing, you know, the Associated Press is taking quotes from the Syrian president's Facebook page. This exactly. is insane, you know? So it it's really like, is. you know, what world are we living in? I mean, who's running this? Is it a bunch of clowns? I mean, where are we? So this brings me to another question, which probably is a little bit maybe not a good segue. However, um, are you concerned about any retaliation for re- revealing this information? I mean, there's, you know, there's so many stories out there of people uh, just disappearing when they show up with uh, information that isn't savory, that isn't, you know. You know, I nobody's nobody's come knocking at my door. Uh, Larry, <laughs> Larry actually works in a, a very sort of high-profile. Uh, government-related job where, you know, he more than anybody, but he's not had any issues. I think because we're presenting information that you can't really argue against if you do the research. Um, a lot of this is is stuff that is out there, and so right. we're just presenting it to a, a wider audience. If anything, I would have imagined that we might have had some problems you know, going going and talking about it so much with the the voice to skull technology and the electronic harassment chapter, which was the most frightening to write. And there's really yeah. not been a whole lot. But, it, you know, that doesn't – Larry and I were talking about what we wanted to write about next, and we were thinking about a subject that really could get us hurt. <laughs> and we thought, well, maybe we better not do that. You know, maybe we better think about this. We both have children – but, it, yeah, it was a concern. I am just absolutely blown away, though, by the reception this book has had, um, not just for the the information about the MK Ultra spying program and the media, but we really wanted to show how even in our interpersonal relationships, we are constantly trying to manipulate each other and using the same kind of coercive techniques that are used on a, a grander, you know, government scale we do this to each other. We do it in love relationships. We do it in boss-employee relationships, and that really blew a lot of people away. Right, right. You you must be reading my mind. I was just speaking to a dear friend of mine who's going through this in in relationships right now, and it's amazing how we have become so 
um, and you know, a, so skilled at being able to manipulate. And it's a mindset that one has to be very mindful of that it one exists, and two that you don't go there. So how right. can we how can we avoid mind control and benefit from some positive aspects? Well, controlling your own your own mind obviously is the goal. Mm-hmm, <laughs> if right. anybody's going to control it, you want to do that. And there are benefits to mind control, things like self hypnosis or hypnosis to lose weight or quit smoking or get healthy. Um, you know, brain entrainment using different vibrational frequencies and sounds and pulses to improve your brain's ability to absorb information. And I mean, there's a lot of really positive, more self-help oriented things that come with being, just simply being aware of your own thoughts. This is the problem. I would say that the vast majority of the thoughts that go through our head are not ours. We do not even think about what we're thinking about. And going to into some more scary stuff like personal manipulation, there are a lot of psychopaths, sociopaths, uh, narcissists out there in the world that prey upon people who do not stay aware of where their minds are at. And right. a lot of the same manipulative techniques that they use are the same techniques used by cult leaders. Um, you know, right. intermittent reinforcement, you know, showering someone with love but then abusing them in between and getting them sort of in this weird state of cognitive dissonance where they don't even know what reality is and and just, you know, using these really coercive techniques that we see cult leaders using and then we see the government using, we see the media using. So obviously these techniques work. But they can now, be used for positive too. <laughs> right. Right. Now how how do you um foresee mind control contributing to um the Colorado theater shooter. Um, you have a segment in the book that talks about that. And right. I'd like to talk a little bit about the the psychosis or the, the mind of that type of individual. How is it is it that that mind is more vulnerable to suggestion or mind control, or can we talk a little bit about that? This is, yeah, shooter syndrome, and and it's a big question mark because this is something where you get into that gray area where a lot of these mass shootings that we see, um, and there's a lot of people who believe that these shooters are under some form of mind control. Now, some of them do act like they're not operating of their own accord. They they look vacant. Uh, James Holmes certainly, who was the uh, Aurora, Colorado theater shooter. When you see him on TV, he doesn't look like he's there. Um, And some of them have some really unusual connections to people that either work for the government or the finance industry or, you know, some kind of weird connection to uh, taking certain pharmaceuticals that could have caused them to become this way. So you've got this sort of conspiratorial angle to this. Are these shooters trained assassins? Are they part of MK Ultra that did not end in the 1970s? And maybe this is the new way of the government enacting some kind of mind control on the populace? Or are they just lone nut jobs? It's really hard to prove either one because there's evidence for both. Right, um, but but it is frightening. It's frightening anytime something like this happens, and you hear people say, "Oh, it's the government. You know, they want to take away our guns." And yet, then you have the other side saying, "But wait a minute, when these things happen, gun sales skyrocket. So it's kind of hard to know who's behind the agenda." Right, <laughs> but, right. But yeah, here's my feeling personally, and we wanted to present the information. But personally, I feel like you can look for something. You're going to find evidence. It's your theory either way. Okay. And I understand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you you know what you look for, you seek. Um and you know, you, you in the book you were you were talking about the quest for uh the Manchurian candidate. Can we talk a little bit about what that is and and how you were uh seeking sure. the uh connection? 
this is where we get into the real stuff. Now, this is documented, provable, a part of our history that you can, you know, there is actual documentation that has been declassified. 